I'm vengeance. So here's the thing. John Walker is one of the most complicated characters to come out of the MCU in years, and I can prove it with facts and logic. So this is part two of me talking about the Captain America mantle in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So if you haven't already, go check out part one where I talk about what Captain America means to people and how Sam Wilson fits into that role. In direct contrast to Sam, we have the MCU character that's managed to top Spider-Man in how much manufactured controversy he's created, John F. Walker. And a disclaimer before we get into it, nothing I say in this video is a reflection of Wyatt Russell as a person. Regardless of how I feel about Walker as a person or a character, Russell brought him to life in a standout performance in the series, and I couldn't have asked for a better actor to play the character. John Walker, in many ways, is America's captain. In the midst of all the controversy happening in the U.S. regarding race, authority, power, and corruption, John Walker is a poignant example of everything America is and wants to be. Publicly, he's charming humble, and sociable. He talks the talk and walks the walk for America to get behind him as Steve's successor. However, this makes a fatal mistake, honestly. The reason that Sam works his cap and Walker doesn't is that Sam knew Steve. He understood that Steve was capable of failing, being imperfect, and making the wrong decision. Much like how, God help me, Spider-Man realizes that Tony wasn't perfect and he shouldn't be Iron Man, Sam realizes that he shouldn't be Steve. The man he is and the symbol he carries are enough, but for Walker, the same can't be said. John Walker's public persona exists to make people think that their new Captain America is still the same as the old one, not skipping a beat at all. We're not skipping a beat, Morty. But Walker in reality actually isn't that bad. He's well-meaning, a competent fighter, he's kind of likable, and he just wants to do the right thing. His anxiety in taking up the mantle endears him to the audience and makes sense for his character. But outside of Sam, there's one character who definitely doesn't like Walker. I neglected to mention Bucky more than once in my last video, but that was intentional. As much as I like Bucky's own story arc and what he does for Sam's story arc, I think Bucky is at his most interesting in the show when he's paired with Walker. While Walker has some degree of respect for both Sam and Bucky, he seems to go out of his way to antagonize Bucky a lot of the time. He, like Zemo, views Bucky as a threat and a menace pretty much just because he's got super soldier serum running through him. Walker antagonizes Bucky because he feels that Bucky's existence antagonizes him. In that way, he's not a villain, he's just that kid in school who bullies everyone else because he's going through some shit at home. Walker had to work to become an exceptional combatant, and Bucky was pretty much just handed that, so you can see how having to work with him is going to show Walker his own shortcomings as a soldier. That's an idea that's summed up pretty perfectly with this line. They weren't even super soldiers. John's failing isn't in him being a bad person. He's trying his best, but like Zemo said, there has never been another Steve Rogers. He just can't live up to that and can't handle the pressure of trying. And as we all know, when something's got too much pressure, it has a tendency to crack. This image will haunt me until the day I die. The build-up, the framing, the aftermath, all of it is great, but the sum does not outweigh this single image. Blood on the shield, a symbol of protection becoming a weapon of brutal murder. The stars and stripes soaked in blood, and this time it's not some assassin that bloodies them and drags them through the mud. It's us. We put the shield in the hands of the wrong man. We put that pressure on him to be all we can be, and he wasn't ready. I've seen a lot of discourse surrounding the scene saying that it isn't bad because Steve killed all the time, which is a bold-faced lie. Steve Rogers did not kill all the time, nor did he use a gun all the time. There's a big difference between a soldier in war or on a mission doing this, as opposed to a superhero and icon publicly doing this. And bear in mind, Steve was in this exact position before, and what did he do? Exactly. And since the show is very much about racial tension in America, isn't it a bit fitting that the blue-clad authority figure comes in with no jurisdiction, brandishing ideals of protecting his people, and decides to pin down and brutally murder an unarmed suspect while he begs for his life? Because I think that's just fucking poetic. Walker isn't a villain to me, even after he kills this guy. When he says, You built me. I really do think he means that. 
he didn't really do anything maliciously outside of, you know, murder. Almost every action Wonker takes over the first five episodes is a direct result of the government and, dare I say it, the society that molded him into the perfect soldier. John is just a victim, a construct of a system that wanted their symbol and their killer, and they got it just like Hydra got with Bucky. The difference is that for the people to believe in the symbol of Captain America, that killer needs to be kept separate and private, and sadly, that just wasn't gonna happen. It's alluded to that he got all those medals of honor, but he did some pretty fucked up shit to get him, and it took a toll on him. So, again, I can't 100% blame him for the man he becomes at the end of the series. But you know who I can blame? The writers. Honestly, as much as I love Jon's character, they really dropped the ball with him in the last episode. The ending they give him in episode 5 is so great. He's a broken man, he's out for revenge, but he's still clinging to this delusion that he's like the one true Captain America. He forges his own shield with the Medal of Honor, and he maintains his authority even when he's stripped of his title. Walker feels like he has the potential to be the biggest personal threat that Sam and Bucky have ever faced. And in the finale... He's worthless. He shows up, he fights Carly for a little bit, he saves some people, which gives him this half ass redemption in the form of a single come to Jesus moment, and then he's just kind of buddy buddy with the single character that he has the most beef with. And then he gets the comic US agent suit, so that's neat. So, yeah, they kind of fucked up with John Walker in the finale, but that doesn't matter. The first five episodes still gave us an incredibly compelling character that, no matter where he goes in the future, has the potential to be the MCU's first proper anti-hero, and do a damn good job of it. Walker may not have been a good Captain America, but he'll be a damn good US agent. Mark my words.